Father here with another war recap and probably be again a little bit of an abbreviated one still battling a cold uh, for about a week now so voice has probably not got a whole lot in it but still want to take a look at this last war that we did uh, beat army Meleu 2 uh, sub clan sister clan um, so who knows you know it might be their second tier players but they're still a level 8 clan and we beat them 69 to 65 used all 50 attacks great job and out three starred them by 4 19 to 15 which uh, was the margin of victory as usual so really nice job there let's go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, three star attacks as well as some uh, continuing progress with some new attack strategies and that's what we're going to start off with here starting with awesome sauce here and see if I can pause it there just briefly and um, sauce here for the last two or three wars here <clears throat> has been bringing the zap queen la loon uh, in the lower echelon tier uh Town Hall 9 bases where you have level 6 air defenses and a lot of times for some reason we're seeing ground X bows uh, without maxed air defenses which is absolutely a dumb base setup um, as a side uh, if you have non-maxed air defenses i.e. level 6 or below and even if you don't your X bows should be pointed up always um, because you're so susceptible to a good air attacker that you just need that extra help with the expos to fend off an air attack. And you really don't gain that much as far as uh, all you gain is range really by setting them down and you open yourself up to uh, a completely different style of attack with an air attack. Which I know they aren't that common at, uh, in a lot of wars because it's a little more advanced tactic. But um, you know, even on bases like this with these spread ADs, a good... A not even good attacker with dragons could just zap quake two air defenses and just drop dragons or drag loon on you and two star your base. So very important that, especially up until you have max uh, air defenses, that you're running your expos up. And I would just suggest doing it on any base. But we'll go ahead and take a look at the zap queen la loon uh you're going to do this anytime or i guess not anytime but when you see a queen right next to an air defense which is a majority of town hall nine bases uh when you think about it because it just tends to be set up that way to where there's four air defenses likelihood that they're spread out and li very likely that the queen is going to be near one of them and so many bases are set up for these la loon type attacks uh, because people want their air defenses spread to give max coverage around the base. And so here you see she's within one tile range of the air defense and level 5. So 3 lightning is going to be more than enough, especially level 6 lightning, to take her out. And then from there, nice spread air defenses and ground expos with lower level archer towers and whiz towers. It's going to open them up for a nice la loon. So we'll take a look at it here. Notice the pattern of the queen is what you need to do when you're dealing with the light quake. Uh, or the the queen zap you need to wait till she's uh, and this is what you do when you're scouting as you watch this path and try to figure out exactly when she's going to be right next to that air defense and that is when you're going to drop the lightning boom 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 right as she's walking under it you see direct hit beautiful shot she does have a sliver of health still it's it's just really tricky because those different lightning strike patterns and so you don't always get it, but you'll see um, there's just a sliver left, and Sauce isn't even going to deal with the queen. He's just going to let the uh, uh, the pups basically, I think, take her out. He uses three loons on an air defense to go ahead and get an archer tower down and a lure. Double poison spell is going to go ahead and drop the dragon and a couple of those air skellies. And then the La Loon portion is just going to come in. You have one more uh, Lava Hound than remaining air defenses. So if you lightning one air defense, you're going to bring four Lava Hounds. The only exception to that might be if they're extremely low level or new, but uh, it never hurts to have that safety valve of having one extra one than there are remaining air defenses. And drops the loons first, which you usually don't do, but because they have to travel so far, uh, that is why those loons were dropped early. Uh, typically your hounds are going to lead the way, but they're faster than loons, so they go ahead and get in there. The hound is tanking all those defenses, the wizard towers, uh, which would 
potentially harm the balloons and both of those Teslas in the core. And then the other two hounds come at the other air defense and they just kind of take turns and work on those air defenses. That first air defense just barely went down. There was only like one balloon left there to get it. Uh, so that was a little bit tricky there and saves a couple loons for the backside uh, because likelihood of fighting against the air sweepers it's nice to have a few uh three to four back end loons to path in from the back side uh, same strategies you'd use with targeting hogs around a base surgical that kind of thing you're going to use a surgical loon approach and you see how quickly those defenses go down there's a few ground targeting defenses left but it doesn't matter and another three star and that is i believe four or more in a row queen zap laloon three stars by awesome sauce in wars so good strategy to learn and to understand which bases that works well against next up we're going to look at an attack by darth against a popular internet base called four corners it is a wide open base where a majority of the defenses are outside except for teslas and uh, in this case they have archer towers they don't always have the archer towers in there uh, the queen is exposed a lot of times she is buried in there where those archer towers are so there's a few variations of it but it's uh, they all look kind of like this and he is bringing a four golem go wee wee and that is one of the recommended ways to beat this base you can also la loon it because of how spread out the air defenses are uh, but darth has level one lava hounds and so this attack is maybe a little uh, more something that you're used to coming from Town Hall 8 uh, where you haven't done a lot of Lava Hound attacks but you have done some Go uh, Wipe, Go Ho, and Go Wee Wee. And the nice thing with the Go Wee Wee is the witches and the skeletons uh, provide a lot of support on the cleanup and the golems can just walk around the base tanking for everything and for the dps and so he's got two squads kind of working their way around the base and they end up meeting up after they've taken everything out and you see the queen is kind of getting in there and taking out some buildings the ideal situation is that those expos target golems and not your witches and wizards which is the case here it doesn't always happen that way once they kind of get behind them he brings all his spells are used for the core here. Now you see they work their way around without spells. Jump spell accesses the core. Heal and rage on the way into the core. Two little piggies come in for some backup to jump the walls as the golems kind of stall out there. And those hogs will go ahead and take out the remaining defenses for a three-star victory. So a really nice job there against that internet base. Next, we have the debut war for a new member, Ninja Jinja. And uh, so definitely want to take an opportunity to look at this, critique this attack a little bit. Goes ahead and gets a lure done there. He's going to drop the poison. Obviously, that clan castle is not very centralized, very easy to lure. Looking at the base, you see he's bringing hogs. There are no potential giant bomb locations in this base. There's a few on the outside that could be pre-tripped and tested to see if they're teslas or giant bombs um and we'll see if he ends up doing that it does use the double poison to take out the clan castle troops so he doesn't have any poison for ground skellies if that's the case we do have exposed queen on the bottom and so hopefully we'll see a bk swap there we do got our kill squad going in the bottom going at the queen excellent job um Rage spell is going to be to get the wall breakers in to make sure he gets into that first compartment, I would assume. Um, not really much other reason to do that. So guessing that's the case there. He's got the kill squad in there tanking and now is bringing in uh, not a surgical, but just kind of being safe with the deployment of those hogs. You notice there was giant bombs in the corner. They're single, of course. He doesn't really have to worry about them as long as he gets his heels down right away, which he does in the corner there. They're going to go ahead and pinch all those defenses on the outside and then work their way towards the top there for those remaining defenses. And he's got those areas pre-healed um, so that dealing with the ground skellies, there was another outside giant bomb again. As long as your hogs are healed up and they're hitting them one at a time, not going to be an issue. Bunch of skellies targeting the hogs now, but all the defenses are down. They'll turn on them quickly, and he's got a good dozen hogs or so, probably more than that even. Uh, no matter what their health level is, they're going to have more than enough time to clean up. Queen is still at full health. Wizard's cleaning up behind, and just a really nice attack there. Poorly set up base, but good read on it to, to see the uh, hog ability of it. 
All right, next up, I think we're going to look at a GoWeHo by Chaz. And this is against Muse Base number four. Uh, this guy thought I played Clash of Clans a lot. This guy, I think, had six bases in this war. Well, maybe not all in this one, but he's they were numbered up to six. So he might have had a few sitting out, but he had at least four of them in. And a lot of them were this same base with, you know, maybe just a little variation on a theme. So you see that first hog went in, pre-trip that GB. That was probably from a prior attack scouting that location. Uh, if not, good read on getting the clan castle lure and that area pre-tripped. He's bringing the Goho, so he's bringing his kill squad, drag the, cl the clan castle dragon up to the top there with a quick kill. Brings the witches, going to back it up with wizards. That'll take the rest of the dragon out. And he's going to go ahead and drop his golem and BK. And kill squad is in, going right at the enemy BK. So picture perfect Goho so far. Going to go ahead and drop those wall breakers in to bust in. And BK right behind. He'll go ahead and get in there. And they'll start targeting the enemy BK right about now. There we go. So good job there. He's pretty much got that area taken care of. And now he's ready for the hog portion of it. Uh, as everything starts targeting his kill squad. You want to get those hogs in there pretty soon. To keep the majority of your kill squad alive. Uh, he brings them in the back side. Which is totally fine. Probably want to use... A couple different flanks at it. Um, I like to kind of go in from the side at a 90 degree angle to keep my kill squad alive. Um, but his golemites are tanking for a few troops. He's got his witches are still alive. Most of the wizards have pretty much gone down, but he's he kept eight of them back still. And that's a little bit risky to have that many troops left for cleanup. You really only need to hold back two to three wizards for cleanup. Um, so I would suggest launching the bulk of them with your kill squad or at least uh, shortly thereafter um, to make sure that you get those buildings down. You'd hate to get to the end and have all your hogs die and you still got eight wizards left, but you still have defenses up. And so that's just my personal preference there. Obviously, it worked out just fine uh, getting those heals down in the core. Uh, knowing that as long as he had that all pre-healed, he was going to be able to get through those remaining GB spots. Um, but you can see, you just don't need this many wizards outside for cleanup. So I prefer to use those while I still have my golem, my BK up. That will help those tanks live longer, um, and that will help you get through more of the base on the kill squad portion of it. So everything's looking good here. Most of the troops are still alive. Tons of wizards. Swag poison drop at the end. So style as well. And final shot there for the three star. Really nice job there, Chaz. And just to show you why you don't do copycat bases in a war, we're not going to necessarily look at the attacks. I just want to show you these other bases. Remember, I said they had six or so bases? I was wrong. I think there was seven. Seven different accounts, I believe. Um, man, that dude's got a lot of iPads or something. Um, but here's uh, another base. Again, you see that same setup, if you notice, from the last one. This is Muse number six. The last one was Muse number four. I think we up higher had Muse number two. And here we had Tigerhawk three-star and using the same general Go Weho concept as uh, Aiden or, or Chaz did on the last one. Uh, moving forward, Muse number seven. Seven freaking bases. Um, one man wrecking crew, and he actually was pretty good if you watched him on offense at, at all. Um, he wrecked a lot of our Town Hall 8 bases, but unfortunately their Town Hall 9s weren't all that good. So you can be a one man wrecking crew, but you better be at the top of the food chain if you are. Uh, but here again, you see the same general base layout using the same design, lower level, and this one was uh, dragooned because uh, uh, with a light quake, leaving just a level 6 and level 5 air defense, the lesser Gi was able to dragoon that with a 105 LQR. Um, so again, not a good idea to have multiple bases the same. You have three layouts. There's just no reason to have one uh, that's the same because once somebody figures it out, it's pretty easy for everyone else to follow suit and uh, just follow the same general pattern to three-star it. Last one we'll look at, just because it's a little bit different, uh, we have a kind of a hashtag style base here. The uh, ones that you'll usually see go wipe, they're anti-air with the clustered air defenses. And Aiden here is going to bring a holo and uh, very good choice on these bases where they're spread out. These outer defenses can be picked off easily. Uh, 
some people do holos different ways. I've seen it. The idea of a holo or these bases out here is to use your loons first to pick off the outer buildings and then just let the hogs run through the core, which doesn't take much because nothing could target them in the core, you see, other than the BK. Um, what I've seen people doing here is they kind of do a funneled hog drop to get them into the core. You see he's got three there on that archer tower. Had to drop a few more because of the flip trap. What he's doing here is creating a funnel. Um, probably need to be a little more aggressive so you don't need to waste so many hogs there. Um, go ahead and drop your five or six there. You're going to have to add a couple uh, to your usual three or four because you know you've got two buildings on the side targeting. But he, what he's doing there is creating the funnel. He's got two of the buildings on the side dropped and now the hogs will path right to the core because he used so many early he had to use the heal spells there he needs to keep them healed they have to get to the air defenses and that's why you see those early heal spells even though the hogs maybe weren't uh, all that dead when he did it but he had to get through the core and he had to get those air defenses down and so that's why he dropped those heals so early he does have his loons going in plenty early though he knows those hogs are going to do their job and get around and the slow moving loons of course and so he gets them in immediately once he knows he's got the core handled and then by the time they get out of the core most of those outer defenses are being dropped and now the loons and the hogs are working together he does have that extra poison spell to go ahead and take out the ground skellies had they been air skellies of course he could have dealt with them with that poison spell as well so good job saving that poison spell for whichever threat came at you and then he just brings a handful of wizards and i think he had a few goblins yep there they are they're going ahead and stealing their loot um, for the cleanup and so nice job there just creating that hog funnel to get everything to the core take out the air defense and then use the loons on the back side um, the alternate version is to use the loons on the front side and then take all those outside buildings out and let the hogs go in and take care of the core and so just a couple different ways you can approach it um, if it's an attack you like to practice i would just work on it both ways see which way tends to work out best with your attack style and go with that um, but good job recognizing these bases uh, with the spread nature and those clustered air defenses that loons can kind of work their way around the outside and take those buildings out. And uh, from there, it's just a matter of wrecking the base. So good job with that attack. Good job, everybody, on your three-star war attacks. We're in the middle of another one right now. It's going well. Um, we should crush these guys as well, and that'll put us back on a nice winning streak. Well, thanks again for watching. Make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Welcome to our newest clan members. Good job, Ninja Jinja, on your first war. And we look forward to many more three stars from you. Until next time, this is the Allfather. Take care, everybody.